It is Tuesday, so again, I bring you greetings from the church staff at Tucker First United Methodist Church. We are going to be continuing a focus this week that I have been dealing with for a few weeks now, a focus on prayer. And certainly in these days of uncertainty with the COVID-19 and social distancing and all of the things that that involves, prayer is such a vital part of our lives. This week, I am going to change the focus of our prayers just a little bit. We have been talking about prayer and some promises that we have in the Bible about prayer, but the Bible also contains some beautiful prayers, and sometimes we have trouble knowing exactly what to pray or how to pray, and it can be helpful to take a look at these prayers that are in Scripture. So for this week, I have picked seven prayers from the Bible, one for each day. A listing of these will appear on our church website, and I invite you to follow along with us this week looking at these prayers that the Bible brings to us. We're going to begin today with the model prayer that Jesus gave to us. We know it as the Lord's Prayer. Many of you know these words by heart. If you need to take a look at uh, this prayer, you can find it in Matthew chapter 6, verses 7 through 15. And you might want to look at that whole section of the Lord's Prayer. For each day this week, I am going to list an entire section of a prayer, but on the website, there will only be one verse of the prayer that has a focus for us in our prayer time. It might be helpful each day to look up the entire prayer and uh, remind yourself of the whole prayer, but then we will focus on one section of that. For the Lord's Prayer, I want us to focus on one section of that prayer for today. This is something that came to me about uh, 25 years ago. I was uh, in a church and a retired seminary professor and his wife got involved in the church. And the seminary professor gave me a book, a novel that was fairly new at that time, 25 years ago. It was a book by Jan Carone. It became the Mitford series. I think there wound up being about 15 books in that series. The main character in the book was Father Tim Cavanaugh. He was an Episcopal rector in a church in a small town in the South. And anyone who has ever had any involvement in church life would recognize many of the characters that appeared in those books in the Mitford series. Uh, some saintly people and some not so saintly people, but we would recognize those characters. In the first two books in the Mitford series, there were references to Father Tim praying the prayer that God always answers. And that was all that was listed, the prayer that God always answers, and nothing more than that was ever stated. I think it was the third book in the series where we got around to hearing what that prayer was that God always answers. And it was one line from the Lord's Prayer, Thy will be done. God's will ultimately will always be done. It cannot be thwarted, and in the fullness of all things, God's will is going to be accomplished. There have been times in my life where I felt like I had a very clear understanding of what was right and what was wrong, of what was just and unjust, of righteous and unrighteous, and I had a lot of clarity in specifically what I felt like I needed to be praying for. But there have been other times in my life where I didn't have that kind of clarity. I wasn't real sure exactly what the focus of my prayers should be. And for a number of years now, I have found myself going back to that prayer that was identified as Father Tim's prayer that God always answers, Thy will be done. When we live in uncertain days, when we're not sure about what the future is going to bring, when we're unsure of exactly how to pray in these days, it might be helpful for us to refocus on that one phrase from the Lord's Prayer, Thy will be done, and to use that as a guide for the prayer time that we share with God. That's a starting point for this week. It's the focus of our prayers for today. And then each day for the coming week, I want to share a different prayer from the Bible and invite you to use these prayers to form your prayer time each day. 
For tomorrow, we're going to be looking at a prayer from number six. This is Aaron's blessing for Israel. Many of us that grew up in the Methodist church will know this as the MYF benediction. When I was growing up, we closed every weekly meeting of our youth fellowship with this prayer. I think I was in college before I realized that this was actually a prayer straight from the Bible and not something that the Methodist church had produced for youth groups to use to close their meetings together, but to think about God's face shining upon us and God blessing us. In these days, we might need reminders that God is truly looking on us and looking on us to bless us. And then on Thursday, we're going to look at uh, 1 Samuel chapter 2, that beautiful prayer from Hannah, a saintly woman of God, and the prayer that Hannah prayed in the temple, knowing that God was a rock, and we might need that foundation in our lives. And then as we continue through this week, we'll be looking at some other prayers, uh, Jesus' high priestly prayer in John 17, and then on Saturday, David's prayer for repentance in Psalm 51. Next Sunday, we'll be looking at Paul's prayer for the Philippian church. In Philippians chapter 1, in that prayer, uh, Paul writes that he's praying for the people to decide what really matters. And when we find ourselves navigating uncharted waters, sometimes these uncertain days have a way of helping us to refocus on what really matters, what's really important in our lives. And then next Sun, uh, next. Monday, we're going to close out our prayer time together, taking a look at that prayer that we know as Mary's Magnificat, this prayer that Mary prayed before the birth of Jesus, and to remember that at that time, Mary was unmarried and yet was pregnant, and in that culture, an unmarried woman who was pregnant could well mean a death sentence, and yet in that time, with all of the uncertainty that surrounded that for Mary, she was able to pray, my soul magnifies the Lord, and I rejoice in God my Savior. Even in the times of uncertainty, we can magnify God, we can rejoice in God's presence with us in our lives. So each day for the coming week, we're going to take a look at a prayer from the Bible, and I invite you to join me in using these prayers to guide us in the living of these days. Scripture offers for us some beautiful prayers, and if we have trouble coming up with our own prayers, Maybe we could start by using these prayers that are already for us out of the Bible and use them to guide us in our prayer time. For each day, there will be a verse from one of these prayers. There will also be listed a simple prayer focus for the day. You can find these on our church website. And I invite you to continue to unite with me as people of prayer in the living of these days. God bless you this week. Amen.